So how cool was that? <laughs> That was probably one of the coolest things we've done all year. <laughs> it's the last day of the year. <laughs> Extra drag man in case a spare. Oh, okay. That makes sense. It's like a spare tire. Yeah. See, it is definitely a short Oh, yeah. You got it. We got this. On New Year's Eve 2022, we decided to end the year with a bang. While the local Durango to Silverton train is a popular tourist attraction, we found another way to see the area. About 30 minutes outside of Durango, there's a family-run business called the Durango Dog Ranch. For the past 30 years, they've been raising and training Alaskan Huskies for dog sledding. You can sign up for dog sledding during the winter, as well as snowcat tours, for a super unique way to see the wilderness around the Durango area. At $200 per person, two people can reserve a sled as long as they are under 300 pounds total. These dogs are strong, but they do have a weight limit. When you arrive, you receive a brief but really fascinating history lesson about the ranch, the local area, the dog sled teams, and then the dogs themselves. After that, it's time to hit the course. I win. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Who's ready to go? Who's ready to go? You so ready? Yes, you are. On average, depending on the snow conditions, the dogs pull the sled at about 8 to 10 miles per hour. However, the trail that we were riding on had a few hills that when we went down, <laughs> our guide said he got us up to about 20 miles per hour. Normally, the views on this area showcase the beautiful San Juan Mountains that are around Hesperus and Durango, but we had a snowy day that kept us from seeing any of those mountains. Literally. Our guide mentioned the beautiful mountains probably two to three times, but we never saw them. That doesn't mean it wasn't a stunning way to see the area, though. On a clear day, I imagine it's a different experience. This is not a passive activity. Whether you're standing behind the sled or sitting down, you have to pay attention to the course and your guide so you know when to lean into corners to keep from flipping over. It can be fairly intuitive depending on your experience and athletic abilities. That's sweet. <laughs> One of my favorite things was seeing the dogs in action and their different personalities. Getting to meet the dogs before we got on the sled, learning their names, we were introduced to which ones were shy and may not say hi to us, which ones were the young ones, who was the matriarch. That was a really fun part of the experience. Overall, this has to be one of the coolest things we did in 2022 just because of the sheer novelty of dog sledding and not having to go all the way to Alaska to do it. One really amazing part of the experience that we liked was getting to see the work of the professional outdoors adventure photographer who took photos of everyone during the experience. He did such a great job capturing photos of both Brian and I and as people who film and like photograph ourselves while we're working and doing things, it was really cool to have someone who actually, you know, does this for a living and knows what they're doing take photographs of us while we were experiencing this. So he was really great at what he did and we ended up buying the package to get these photos because when are we going to go dog sledding again? If you're in Durango during the snowy months, definitely check out Durango Dog Ranch and make your reservation to experience this kind of dog sledding magic for yourself.